Hey, what's up everybody? This is Carpo coming at you from the back room. This is the land. I call it Carpo land, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Today's discussion involves anxiety, fear, self-importance, um, all these things that come with being a human, the things that we all experience, we kind of have a choice to either remain completely ignorant of who we are in our lives and just move along perpetually, making money, doing our thing until we die, or we can choose to what they call, I guess, become a seeker or someone who is searching for the truth. And then there are people in between who are kind of taking, uh, taking an approach to life as if when something comes that's information that I can actually do something with, or when I learn something new, I can accommodate or assimilate it into my way of thinking. And if it's useful, then I put it into my lifestyle. If it's not, then I let it go. Many of the things I've learned about, say, numbers, numerology, found that they haven't helped me yet, so they get set on the back shelf, whereas things like values, learning about honesty and integrity, um, being fair in business practices, these are things that I've seen applied which have, have helped me, so I utilize them. But nothing is cast out, nothing is set aside permanently and said this is bunk or this is not true, or this is no good, because there's a use for everything. So. Before I go on and wander off getting off track and rambling like I always do, I want to try to stick to the subject. That you are... <laughs> As a human, you have no reason to stress other than your basic day-to-day uh, -day anxieties which we create ourselves or the actual threat to life or health or property which uh, create, uh, I guess, a momentary panic the fight-or-flight syndrome, which helps us to get through situations. This is a... I mean, with all the random shit I talk about, this is probably the most important thing that I've learned in my life, besides aspects of love and, you know, understanding and family. Um, as far as behavioral traits to change, one of the most important things to me was to get away from stress. And in my early to mid-30s, I went through a period where I was kind of stressed out, and I had to sit down and ask myself, what are you stressed about? Why are you waking up worrying about things? And I could feel it in the pit of my stomach. And something was just eating at me. And, and so I spent, a, I don't know, since then, it's never ending. I, I've gone on a, on a life pursuit. See, I was already at a point where I was awake, if you want to call it that. Um, awake in the sense that I knew that there was more to being a human than just being alive that I knew that many of the things that we are taught and that we've learned are bullshit and that we have to kind of seek for ourselves. Um, I was a seeker, in other words, already, but I hit this point where I realized that I was putting up a blockade with my stress. Stress relates to your body in a very negative way. When you are under stress, it releases cortisol into your bloodstream. Cortisol uh, prevents, well, Cortisol is the stress hormone, if you want to call it that. This is uh, why people who are stressed, they say stress will help make you gain weight. It has to do with the way cortisol you know, acts in your body. Your digestion uh, tends to shut down. Your brain processing tends to shut down. And your immune system tends to shut down, all when you're stressed. To reserve that energy for adrenaline, for moving, it, you, I'm learning every year more about the different components of the body, things like adrenaline, norepinephrine, and whatnot, and how these chemicals, it's not that there's a certain storage amount of each chemical in your body for when your body needs it. Your body can use certain amino acids to convert one chemical into another, one compound into another. So like with dopamine, you have L-dopa in your bloodstream. If your body needs it, it can convert it to dopamine. But it's not just going to convert these drugs just because they're there. Um, in, in other words, if you provide your body with everything it needs, it can fight stress, it can fight anxiety. Um, 
but when you are under stress, your body has so much crap going on with it that you can't think clearly, you can't function clearly, and you tend to become, let's just put it this way, if you're stressing, you're dumb. <laughs> you're dumber than you would be if you weren't stressing. And when you're in an argument with somebody, say, who's really, really stressed out and frustrated, and you're remaining cool, calm, and collected, then you're always going to be, you're always going to come out ahead. It's just like when you say something you don't mean, this is why. It's because of cortisol. It's because of adrenaline. Because your body is not thinking correctly. Your mind isn't designed to work in an argument. It's designed to fight and get out of there, you know. In other words, fight or flight does not involve rational thinking. <laughs> and uh, now we're trying to accommodate and incorporate rational thinking into our uh, experience without allowing the stress to get to us. So abandon the stress by realizing that nothing is worth fretting over if it's not an immediate threat. And even if it is an immediate threat, you have to sit and say, is it something I can do anything about? And if it's something you can't do anything about, then don't worry about it. I mean, I know that sounds it's like duh, but it, it's, it's, it's something that's helped me immensely in my life, you know. This means for me stressing out is something that I want to save for times when I really need it. And when I am anxious, I can utilize it. When I, I don't get angry anymore, I don't get frustrated and hold in aggressions. But when I do need to get angry or loud, I can do it. And uh, successfully, you know, and come across. It's just like, if you cuss too much in life, nobody's going to take you seriously when you say the word fuck. And I've found that, you know, holding back, that's a, a metaphor for kind of holding back on using your you know, stress. If you overstress yourself, your body's going to deplete itself. You're going to be exhausted. It's going to take, I don't know, more to get you... Well, anyway, I'll just abandon that thought because I can't quite coherently place it, what I wanted to say. Um, what I really like to see <clears throat> in my life is to be able to completely annihilate stress and I've come pretty damn close to it. And so, <laughs> now that I've said, don't stress, and taken 7, 19, 7 minutes, 19 seconds to say it. Um, I'd like to say my method for uh, one of the, or one of the methods for kind of getting away from it. Whenever you're stressed, and whenever you start thinking that something in your life is so important, you know, it's easy to close your eyes and just think of somebody who's worse off. I went to the store last night to buy uh, some stuff at Trader Joe's, and the guy at the counter, I said, uh, the checker, I said, "How are you doing tonight?" And he said, "I'm doing great, man." And I was like, that's awesome. I don't hear that very often. Every time I talk to a checker, like, oh, so-so, or, oh, you know, or I've been better. It's like, you know, people's attitudes really suck. <laughs> I hate to say it. Uh, but then this guy got to talking, and I got to talking, and I said, I said, that's awesome. That's how I feel. You know, you just make the best of it. It doesn't matter if you're really super happy. You, you just want to be as positive as you can to carry that through your day. And he said, you know, that he reminds himself that someone else could always be worse off. And that's what I do or that we could always be worse off. And that's a very simple way to say, well, things could be worse. But this is different than that. My method for really realizing our problems isn't comparing it to other problems or even comparing it to other humans. But back up a minute. Back up away from your city and look at the greater problems in the world. And then continue outwards, past the moon, past Mars, way out past Neptune. You know, when they sent the Voyager out, Carl Sagan convinced them to, to turn the camera around for one last glimpse of the Earth before it left our solar system. And it took a picture, they called it the pale blue dot, is what he, and he wrote a poem about it, and it's beautiful. Um, and his point was to put it in perspective. When you look at our planet as a dot on the horizon, way, 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 way far away, just like another planet, just like we see Venus or anything else, you realize the insignificance and how small we really are and how only recently have we really proven to ourselves how big the universe is. Um, and for those who don't you know, know much about astronomy, when they first looked through the Hubble telescope and they saw that some of these stars they saw were not stars but actually entire galaxies, it absolutely blew their minds and it still blows their minds it still blows my mind it blows everyone's mind but we cannot grasp the entire size of it and anyone who's ever watched a video if you haven't seen the comparison charts I'd urge you to check them out it's where they put 
um, a bacteria, you know, an atom next, and then compare it to the size of a, you know, a molecule back to, all the way up bacteria, human, the size of a mountain to the size of a moon to the size of a planet to the very largest sun, then out to the galaxy, and then out to some of these giant, uh, beautiful, beautiful like displays out in space that are some, you know, two to three million light years across. Millions of light years. I mean, you can't, we can't even fathom traveling a million years or how far we'd get in a million years on a bicycle. But just imagining that this one little area is millions of light years across and that that's just one little tiny speck. So when you're backing up from the Earth and you see that speck, then you back up from our galaxy and you see that speck. And you can back up and back up and back up and continue to see these little dots until everything just becomes, I guess, a guess. <laughs> That's just it, I guess. And we don't know where it goes from there. We don't know how big the universe is, and we don't know whether the entirety of what we see is wrapped up in a little tiny bubble among trillions of other universes or infinite universes. Think about that. Next time you're stressed out. And realize that the reason why we stress is because we give our life importance and significance. Because we want to be important. But what we have to realize is that Everything that has evolved to bring us to this point has made us aware of the universe. I feel as if we are the universe seeing itself, that we are the eyes of the world, not just the eyes of the world, the eyes of the galaxy, perhaps the eyes, I would say, of the... I might say the eyes of the universe, except for I don't believe that we're really that significant. We're the eyes of our solar system, okay? Our planet and our solar system, there are billions of solar systems within just our galaxy. Billions and billions of galaxies and guaranteed, you know, they talk about a one in a million chance. If it's even a one in a million chance that there's life on another planet, then that makes tens of thousands of planets that could be inhabitable by life just in our galaxy. Tens of thousands just in our galaxy. I mean, when you carry that out to the billions of galaxies, you see that there are trillions and trillions of worlds out there that are inhabited. That life is just... And this, you don't have to prove it. You don't have to go out and travel to these places to see that there's life because we've shown that life wants to live anywhere. That life can live at the bottom of the deepest, darkest ocean, living off of the hydrogen sulfide that's coming out of the volcanic deposits, never even seeing daylight. Using as long, put it this way, as long as there's a sun available for energy, or a star available to create light, photons, these photons can be converted into energy by various means, whether it's even the gravitation of a planet. Now put it this way, what if, even if there's no light, if two bodies are entwined in a gravitational pull, it pushes and pulls on that. Just like what's happening with, I believe it's Io, the moon of Jupiter, where since the moon is in an elliptical orbit, uh, it tends to twist and turn underneath, creating volcanic geysers and whatnot. And I believe that's all it takes, is that, to create a life. If you can create volcanoes, you can create hydrogen sulfide, you can have a life that lives off that hydrogen, and then more life can evolve from that. I mean, these are things that we've only recently really discovered. I mean, in the last 10 to 20 years, we've been able to finally prove that evolution can take hold in some amazing ways. And uh, for those who've never seen the experiments, uh, I'd really like to step back and look at some research I did a couple of years ago about using light to carry DNA information to test tubes. Long story short, they took a test tube with a virus they projected a light through that, or a laser through that, then through a sealed, into a sealed plexiglass, then into another sealed test tube, so they were completely isolated, and they were able to create this virus, not create it, I believe. What happens is the light somehow transfers the information. They did this with seawater and then sterile water, and they were able to get small, what looked like the beginnings of amino acids to form in the sterile water just from the light projecting it in. In other words, light carries information. And this is, you know, where it gets weird to me because you can't prove a lot of this, but it, um, light is the word, okay? The word of God, if you want to call it that, the word of the universe, all the vibrations, the creaks and groans and settling of the universe. 
Um, these are all these sounds are felt by us. They come through in various waves. They can be microwave radiation, all the way down to uh, you know very low frequency sounds, which have wavelengths which are like the size of planets. I think the largest one is like the size of the moon or something. Very very ELF, extremely low frequency. All of these are in, you know, radio signals are the same as light. These are all just different versions of vibration. So the light is carrying information and that vibration is able to transfer that information. They're thinking that perhaps people get sick by being near someone, not necessarily even touching them or even being in the same room or exposed to the germs. There's something different going on. There seems to be a blueprint for our existence that is projected in a way. And, and when I say projected, I, I'm, I'm saying hologram in the sense that the energy of the universe is projected in my mind through these prisms of DNA, if you want to call it that, or maybe they are the receivers, I don't know, uh, maybe the earth itself, and it creates these pockets of signals, electromagnetic signals, and this has to do in my mind with why people have birth signs and are born on certain days and have certain, you know, uh, relations to their star sign and whatnot, and how quirky that can be, but how very accurate it can be because when the planets are in certain positions there are certain vibrational frequencies going on magnetic frequencies on the earth electricity and magnetism electromagnetism everything is based on these and um, you know <laughs> getting into gravity you know gravity is a tough one people seem to have a hard time explaining that and but but in my mind it's just something that's it's just more electricity and grav uh, and magnetism it's just more these magnetic fields interacting with one another and it's just a big beautiful display of just universal existence and somehow through all of this there was enough time on earth for this creature to evolve that was able to use brain capacity to reason and think its way out of the problems it got into and that was the human and we're still young at this, and we're still figuring this out. But humans are very intelligent and able. We could, uh, in my mind, find our way out of some of these problems rather than throwing in the towel. When people say the economy's screwed, humans are done, you know, society's over, forget all that. Forget society. Society is just an image. It's a, it's a, a structure that's a, just in the, in the eye of the beholder, complete blueprint. It doesn't exist. Forget society, say society collapses, a few million people survive and rebuild. The human intelligence will still be there. We have still evolved to survive. And that will give us a major uh, step up in evolution if humanity can survive into the future. I foresee some stuff going down on Earth and it might not be too beautiful uh, in the short term for us. But thinking that we're gonna destroy our entire planet don't even don't even consider that option because uh, we could blow ourselves up ten times over with radioactive weapons and in a few thousand years something would come back probably have a better resistance to radiation we've been bombarded with cosmic waves through history that has you know can be recorded in uh, rocks that are found at the bottom of the ocean that develop over millions of years manganese nodules which are basically like the layers of tree rings and they can read it and find times when our magnetic field of our of our solar system was forced in past the earth and we actually received bombardment of tons of cosmic rays during this time there's major die-offs yet the animals that survive develop a resistance to this so if we're exposed to radiation long term the ones who are able to resist it and who are able to develop DNA uh, that isn't as affected by it will be the dominant species and humans with our ability to at least think our way through it hopefully can uh, maybe I don't know maybe pull our heads out of our asses and do something good because I go back and forth on what we're gonna do with this world are we gonna make it a good one are we gonna completely annihilate it but either way humanity is not going anywhere unless something happens like an asteroid impact which <laughs> I could say that global warming will be a culprit because CO2 CO2 really is the regulator CO2 levels in the atmosphere alter from year to year uh, each season as the snows come down south 
uh, through Canada. The trees all through the, the whole northern you know area of Canada, they're, they're, they're a huge part of the lungs of the earth. And uh, as we're adding more and more CO2, we really are you know, causing more and more problems. I know people want to deny that human-made global warming is existing or that it happens, but it's like they say, CO2 is invisible, so it's easy to dispute. If it had a color, people would think differently. You can't argue with the charts, but the point is not whether, you know, are we going to sit here and argue about global warming or are we going to do something about it? Because, you know, back to what I was saying in the beginning, yeah, our problems are small as individuals, and stressing about things is useless if it's something you can't do anything about. But as humans as a whole, we are stressing. We're stressing because our planet's damaged and because people are taking advantage. And these are the things that are worth stressing about. Now, this is where anxiety and stress can be used properly, channeled. Fighting for causes fighting for what's right and while yeah only one in ten people really seems to speak out on these issues we should know that that number is growing <clears throat> people are becoming more aware and you know the old generation is fading it's and I'm not talking about old people I'm not going by age here just saying the old way of thinking is fading people are coming forward and starting to understand that it's a different world than we even I grew up in and uh, if we eliminate the stress and we start thinking rationally as a whole, then we won't make stressful decisions, dumb decisions like we do. Don't really know what else to say. I could probably go on and on about this, but I won't. I'll spare you. Have a good day, everybody. Remember, think positive, if you can. Um, and if you can't, 